Okay, everybody. So I want to go over how to do this worksheet really quickly. Uh, I'm just going to explain how to set some of these things up. We're really going to go over the answers just yet. Okay, so first of all, we have conversions here. So we're converting, uh, first we're doing joules. So calories to joules. So actually all the, the answers are given to you already. We just want to show, I just want you to show work. So it's actually all kind of the same thing for all of these. So it's going to be 8.368 uh, calories. And then you're going to convert it. You're going to have one joule is 4.184. Oh, ha, other way around. Oh my goodness. It's 4.184 joules for every one calorie. Duh. Dummy. Okay, and when you do this work here, you'll get this answer there. Okay. Uh, same thing you're going to do here converting calories, uh, converting two calories here. So you have 0 0.5 joules. And you're going one calorie for every 4.184 joules. That's really it. I mean, this is really, really simple here. Um, 0.5 divided by 4.184, you should get around 0.1. Okay. That's really, really simple. Okay. The next one. So uh, for these ones, you're using Q. You're using Q equals MC delta T. Okay, so just read these problems and find out what Q is, what M is, what C is, and what delta T is. Okay, just read them carefully. Okay, that's the same for number one, number two, and you're actually just solving for Q for number one and number two. Uh, same thing for number three and four, you're just solving for Q. Q. Really, really simple. Okay, uh, number five is a little bit trickier. You're solving for delta T. So you'll give Q, so this is Q. Uh, this is C, this is C, this is M. So Q equals M C delta T and you're just solving for delta T. Okay. You're solving for delta T. So essentially, uh, you're going to plug in all the variables Q M C, and then solve for delta T. Okay. The next ones are a little bit trickier. Um, this one here, you're solving for C. So you have Q equals M C delta T. And this one you're solving for C. Okay, so just be careful with that one. Okay, all the units are given, all the other thing, uh, the terms are given to you. Okay, for number two and three, two and three are tricky. First of all, um, in order to go from kilograms to grams, so one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. So there's a thousand grams and one kilogram. So essentially you're just multiplying by a thousand. Same thing here, 2.8 kilograms thousand grams over one kilogram that's the easy part okay the other thing is i know that the the specific heats for both of these are given in kilojoules per kilogram but it's a thousand over a thousand so you can kind of ignore the kilojoules this is just the same as 0 0.5 joules per gram degree celsius and this is the same as 0 0.43 joules per gram degree celsius so same thing okay uh for number two and three however though you this is they're tricky. Okay. How are you going to set them up? So you're, you're still using Q equals MC delta T. But in this case, what you're doing is you're taking some water. Okay. You're taking some water and then you're taking a piece of metal and dunking it in the water. Okay. So now the metal is hotter than the water. So the Q of the metal is going to be negative if you're losing heat so it's negative q of the metal that's going to be equal to the heat gained by the water so q of the water okay so the negative heat lost by the metal or the heat lost by the metal is equal to the heat gained by the water okay so for both of these both of these negative q of the metal equals q of the water okay and now q is just negative m of the metal uh, C of the metal and delta T of the metal. And then Q of the water is M of the water, C of the water, delta T of the water. Okay. Now the mass, 
specific heat are all given to you. The mass and specific heat are given to you. Now, delta T is T final minus T initial. Same thing for this one. Now, the T, uh, the T initial for the water and the metal are going to be different. These are different. Get all the ones that I've underlined, they're all going to be different from one another. However, the final temperature of the water and the final temperature of the metal will be the same. Okay, so these two are equal to one another. Okay, so everything I have underlined, the mass of the metal, the specific heat of the metal, the initial temperature of the metal, the mass of the water, the specific heat of the water, and the initial temperature of the water, those are given to you and those are all different from one another. Okay, what you're trying to find is the final temperature. And the final temperature is the same for both the metal and the uh, water. So essentially, you're, you're solving for T final. So you're going to have this negative M of the metal, C of the metal, and then T final minus T initial equals M of the water, C of the water, and then um, T final minus T initial. And again, you're solving for T final, and T final should be equal on both sides here. All the other variables are given to you. So you're going to plug in all the other variables and solve for T final. It just becomes like a hard algebra problem. Okay, so give that a shot. Uh, I'll go over the answers later on after you've, you've checked it out. Okay, good luck with that.